Hey guys, this is video three in the playlist for how to create a character in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we're sort of working through this process sequentially. And so video one was uh, a little bit about race and class, you know, and what do those selections mean as they kind of flow through the rest of the player sheet. Uh, video two, we talked about ability modifiers. These guys here, you know, where do those numbers come from? Um, you know, we could either roll uh, our dice to get to those numbers, or we could take the standard array to get to those numbers. For me, it's always more fun to kind of roll the dice to get to those numbers, uh, these ability scores across the, the side here of your player sheet. And so for this video, I want to talk about, as we're kind of moving through the, the sheet itself, I want to talk about what are these numbers here, and what does this number here, this proficiency bonus, do for us in terms of filling out this block with all these sort of little selections of skills, and kind of what does the proficiency bonus mean in general in terms of playing the game. So this video is about the proficiency bonus. And I've got my player handbook here marked in all the different places where they're going to come up. So it's not exactly as straightforward as you might expect. Uh, but it's cool because uh, it's all in the book and we can walk through it here in this video quite quickly, I hope. So again, following the player sheet. Uh, let's start with this. Where does the proficiency bonus come from? Well, here, let me just stand up and show you kind of the first step here. And as I flip open the book, on page 15, there's a table at the bottom down here called Character Advancement, and it lists the number of experience points that you gather as you go through adventures, the level that that number of experience points corresponds to, and the proficiency bonus that you add. So kind of irrespective of the class that you are, when you reach a certain level, you get this many points in your proficiency bonus. So for me, and this guy, this little paladin that I've got here named Aramal Evenwood, uh, I am now a level six paladin, and so my proficiency bonus is a plus three. Level six, plus three. Pretty straightforward. And if I go to any of the classes themselves within the book, so let me just flip to the Paladin class within the book. Each class also has a table, a big table like that off to the side, or somewhere kind of on the front, near the front of the page where the class description is, and it also has the level, the bonus, uh, what special things you get, uh, special class features that you get once you reach that level. Um, and in the case of the Paladin, you know, the spell slots. But each class has this sort of similar table but so you can either look for it uh, where I just showed you in the kind of in the front of the player handbook down here, or you can go to whichever class you are. The numbers are the same, and so that's what populates that proficiency bonus number there. Well, so what? Um, what do you do with it besides kind of put it on this sheet, and what does it mean for you? Well, again, I want to bring your attention back to this set of skills here. So for each class, you are proficient at certain things. So I'll pull your attention towards the details within the class description. Again, with the Paladin, let me adjust the camera a little bit here. Okay, so with the Paladin here, if I look at the top of the page, under class features, I see this sort of section uh, underneath it. it says proficiencies. And for the paladin, I'll just read it to you. I am proficient in all armor and shields, uh, proficient in simple weapons and martial weapons. I'm not proficient in any tools. I have proficiency on two types of saving throws, wisdom and charisma. And I'm proficient in two of the following skills. Uh, athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Those skills are all listed here. Now, obviously, there are far more in this list than there are that I just read to you. 
which means that for a paladin, for example, I only get to pick of this set of skills two that I'm actually proficient in. What does that mean? That means of two of these skills, I add not only what I got from my ability score in that particular area, so if it's athletics, for example, uh, I would add my strength ability modifier, which is a plus four. And because I am proficient in athletics, should I choose, I also add my plus three. So for an athletics check, uh, let's say, say for example, my character Aramal is sort of stuck in some, uh, some location, maybe behind a boulder, or maybe it requires some feat of strength in order for me to get out of it, some athletic feat. Maybe I have to uh, leap across some great distance or use some strength to pull myself out of something. And I would say, I'm going to try that at that during the game. And the dungeon master would say, okay, we'll make an athletics check. And so I would roll my d20. I would roll like five in this case, but I would add seven for, for athletics, which is my strength plus my proficiency bonus. Four plus three is seven. And so seven plus five is 12. And the dungeon master might have set a DC of 10. It might be a pretty simple feat, and that might be enough. So even though I only rolled a five, that might be enough to accomplish the feat that I was getting at. So that's where these guys kind of matter in terms of your proficiency bonus plus your ability modifier. Um, now, you notice I also have more than just two colored in here. So, but wait a minute, you say. In the player handbook, it says choose two. And you have one, two, three, four, five. I've got six of these things colored in on this guy. Uh, so where are the rest of them coming from? Well, in addition to your class, you also get proficiency by virtue of your background. Now, I am a noble, uh, have a noble background. And so if I flip to the, the background section of the player handbook, Okay, now I flip to the background section of the player handbook and I look at Noble. And if I look over here, ah, by virtue of the fact that I'm a Noble, I am also proficient in history and persuasion. So I've got athletics, I've got uh, intimidation, I'm also proficient in persuasion, and I'm proficient in history. There we have it. That's where the, the, the marks come from. Um, and so you continue to sort of fill out your, your player sheet this way. Let's go back to the, to the list here of my class description. What does it mean to say I'm proficient in all armors and shields? Does that mean that I get to add plus three to my armor class? No, that's not what that means. Um, in terms of armor class, that means that if I'm wearing armor that I'm proficient in, and so for... A paladin, that would be uh, all armor. It means I've got no limitation, no matter what I'm wearing. Everything from light armor all the way up to plate mail, heavy armor. I'll be able to do whatever I want to do without having to roll for disadvantage. Now, if I'm wearing plate armor and I'm not proficient in heavy armor, every time I want to do something that requires movement like that, I've got to roll two 20s, two d20s, and take the lower of the two because I'm rolling a disadvantage. So I want to make sure that I'm wearing armor that my class says that I'm proficient in. Okay, what else? Uh, let's see. If we continue to move across the, the list here, I can see that uh, that's where we talked about armor. Uh, let's talk about what happens when we use our ability checks. So talk about that. We add that to um, proficiency bonus to the ability modifier, if that's something that we're proficient in, the athletics example. And then uh, how else to use it on attack rolls as well. So if I go back to my class description here and it says, I am proficient in simple weapons and in martial weapons. So if I go to the, the weapons list, and let's see, where's my weapons list? Here. It says, I'm proficient in simple weapons and in martial weapons. 
And so for a paladin, I'm proficient in just about anything here because uh, it doesn't say whether or not it's simple melee weapons or simple ranged weapons or martial melee or martial ranged. I am proficient in basically all simple and all martial weapons. If I was, say, for example, a smaller character, maybe a, a gnome or something, I might not be proficient in uh, sort of martial melee uh, heavy weapons. So I would not be able to add my proficiency bonus to any attack using those weapons. But because as a paladin, I am proficient in any of those weapons, no matter what I'm using, and I have a glaive, uh, I will add plus three to my attack roll. As it says in the book here, uh, let's see, you add your proficiency bonus to your attack roll when you attack using a weapon with which you have proficiency, as well as when you attack with a spell. So if I have any sort of spell attacks, um, I would also add my proficiency bonus to that as well. And I think that covers quite a bit in the book of where proficiency bonus comes from and why it matters. And as we're sort of moving across the player sheet, um, it's a little bit easier to see if I do this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so we've talked about race and class. We've talked about ability scores, these guys here, and the modifiers, where they come from. Uh, now we've talked about uh, the uh, you know, proficiency bonus and what it means to these skills. Oh, I, one last thing I forgot to mention, saving throws. Um, if you remember when I was reading the Paladin uh, description, it says I, I was proficient in saving throws involving charisma and wisdom. And you can see both of those little guys are colored in right there. And that means I add my wisdom modifier and my charisma modifier plus three. And those are what I get to add to any saving throw. These are what, th Those are the numbers I get to add to any saving throw requiring a charisma or a wisdom save. Okay, well there's a lot in there to unpack, so hopefully that's helpful. Uh, we're moving across the sheet. This is video three. Uh, in video four, we're going to continue just to sort of fill out the sheet. We're going to talk a little bit more, uh, maybe more in detail about armor class, and then we're going to talk about hit points. Uh, this is something that's a little bit uh, confusing as well for folks just trying to figure out how to get started. You don't want too many, you don't want too few, uh, you don't want to game them. So part of what makes the game fun though is uh, sort of how long do you have, how much damage can you take before you go down. So in the next video we're going to talk about uh, these other two badges here on the other side of proficiency bonus. Hit points and armor class and uh, we'll see you next time. Hey, if you like that video, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, maybe give it a like, one of the little thumbs up guys down below. Uh, leave comments, questions, suggestions. I love to hear from you. And uh, don't forget to share it with your friends and we will see you for video number four as we continue to fill out the player sheet. Uh, this will be in the playlist for character creation. And uh, so looking forward to next time.